Hi, it's Eleanor and today I'll be talking to you about the independent bookshop Shakespeare and Co. This is a new segment which I'm trying out where I'll have an in-depth look at all of the independent bookshops which I'll come across in my travel. Shakespeare and Company which is a bookshop in Paris as I visited Paris recently. Shakespeare and Company Bookshop is one of the two English speaking bookshops still left in Paris, the other one being the Abbey Bookshop. It was originally opened by Sylvia Beach in 1919 and in the 1920s many of the lost generation authors as they like to call themselves like James Joyce, Ernest Hemingway, Ezra Powell, all of these authors used to visit there quite frequently. And then, during the German occupation of Paris, it was closed down and never opened. This was until 1951, where it was opened in its current residence. The, it was reopened by George Whitman in 1951. In 1964, it was renamed Shakespeare and Company. This was in tribute of Sylvia Beach's original store, and also in celebration, in celebration of William Shakespeare's 400th birthday. Currently, it sells both old and antique books, and allows people to peruse it for free as a reading library. Next door to it is a small cafe which sells specifically vegetarian and vegan and gluten free food. You can be a tumbleweed as they are called at the bookshop which basically means that you can stay there for free as long as you read one book a day and, write, and help out in the shop and you write an autobiographical page for um, the collection. Today the bookshop has housed an estimated 30,000 tumbleweeds and they see no reason to stop now. Inside the shop there are small bits and pieces which make it so different to any other independent bookshop I've ever visited. When you go up the stairs to the first floor there is a sign above one of the doorways which, which reads Do not be inhospitable to strangers lest they be angels in disguise. And this quote along with the concept of tumbleweeds really defines Whitman's ideal for this short for this bookshop um, because he once said that the one of the reasons that he created it was something like because he wanted people to give what they can and take what they needed and this is sums up the whole ethos of the bookshop in many different rooms there are seats and you see people just picking up a book and reading it and it feels more like a house than a bookshop there's even a typewriter um, sitting looking out of a window which just looks onto the river and people have written notes and it's just it's, it creates such a sense of history and there's a mirror on which you can write post-it notes and notes to missed connections or, or people that you just want to meet and it's so lovely I was reading a couple of them I went on a Monday so there obviously wasn't very many because they clear them out every week but it was things like Dear so and so, if you're if you're reading this, meet me here at this time at this place, and it just creates a sense that there is something bigger than you here, and it's a sense of home. When I came when I went into the bookshop, I felt like I was home, even though I've never been there before. It creates such a magic that all independent bookshops I feel have but specifically Shakespeare and Company. When I was there, I naturally had to get a book, and I got James Joyce's portrait as a young man. I've been wanting to read James Joyce for a while now, I haven't read any of his books and I don't think I own any of his books, and I thought it was only fitting to get a book by the uh, lost generation at a bookshop where they frequently visited. And just whenever I see this book, I'll remember that I got it from this book, from Shakespeare and Company bookshop. The man also gave me this little bookmark with upcoming events on the back of Shakespeare and Company. And he also stamped that, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got Shakespeare's head and Shakespeare and Company around it. This book is going to be very special for me, not just because of the book itself, but also all the memories that come with it. While I was there, I also bought a tote bag, which looks like this. And it says Shakespeare and Company, zero kilometers from Paris. So it's at the heart of Paris. And again, it's just going to be another memory for me such an incredible bookshop. So there's my brief summing up of Shakespeare and Company. If you're ever in Paris, please do go. It's an incredible experience. And if you know any amazing bookshops like that that I could visit, let me know and I'll, you know, try and go there. And I'm hoping to continue this series whenever I visit a new amazing bookshop. Let me know if you enjoyed it and I will see you soon. Goodbye.